Brandon, how are you doing today? I hope everybody is having a really super awesome, fabulous, amazing day today. Um, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Gabe and this is Gabe Loves Makeup. And um, we are so glad that you're here today. Um, you know, and when I say we, I mean you and I because this channel is made up of both of us together. Um, so we welcome you here with open arms with a great big hug. So, you know, welcome, come on in, pull up a chair, you know, grab you a little snack, grab you a little glass of wine, a little cup of tea, you know, whatever it may be, a little cup of tea. Um, you know, come on in and sit down because we're going to be talking about some favorites today. So, if you're kind of interested in seeing what my February favorites were, which I have some old ones and I have some new ones, then you know, stick around and let's find out together. Hey guys, we are ready to get to, can you believe February is already over with? We are already in the month of March. I mean, we're going to be turning back the time and turning up the time, sorry, on the 7th, I think. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like spring is already here. We are like, we're about ready to hit it. I mean, it was like, I'm sure in certain parts, regardless of where you are, I'm sure that you're not experiencing spring yet. <laughs> we're, you know, I'm in North Carolina and some of the trees are starting to blossom a little bit. Um, it's still kind of backwards and forwards. Um, it's been a little bit cooler day to day than, than normal, but, um, you know, but it just all depends on where you are. So, but I mean, I'm sure that we are all welcoming spring. We're all ready for spring to get here because we're tired of this weather. We're ready to move on. Okay. But anyway, but in the meantime, what did we use in the month of February and what did I really enjoy? So, I think I'm going to start off with some old favorites because this is what's really saved me in the month of January, February, and the month of December. Um, and they're all very similar products, but, um, you know, but I wanted to kind of mention these and just tell you. So, um, I do a lot of what the, what a lot of the young people call the youngins, the youngins, the youngsters, they call slugging. So, I mean, I've been doing that for a very, very long time. I actually even use Vaseline as a primer sometimes because if you guys don't know and you're new to my channel, I'm a big Marilyn Monroe fanatic. I love old Hollywood. I love a lot of the stuff that they used back then. I love to collect items and stuff. And so, this is one of those things that Whitey, whenever he used to use in a Marilyn's makeup, he always used to put a, a thin layer of Vaseline. That's what would give her the glow up underneath her makeup. So, um, this is just an amazing product. And the other one that I've been using is the CeraVe ointment, the healing ointment. Um, you can get both of these, you know, at your local drugstore, your uh, Target, your Walmart, you know, um, usually Walmart some, and Target sometimes is a little bit cheaper. You can get it on Amazon. That's where I got this one. I got a great big one of these on Amazon. They're both very, very similar. They both have very, um, pretty much similar ingredients. Um, but I just put it over top of my night cream after I've done about five serums, you know, and I do like five creams. <laughs> You know, because I'm, I'm a little overboard with moisture, that's for sure. Um, but I really love to put this on, especially when I'm feeling really, really dry. It does make me feel really super hydrated. So, I have been doing this as my night step. I would not recommend this kind of a step, though, if you're oily or if you're very a heavy combination person. Don't try to do it because it might break you out and it might cause aggravation. I would only recommend it for someone that's a little bit more on the normal or especially very dry skin side. I definitely would never recommend recommend it for an oily skin person. Um, and maybe in spots or your neck, maybe, but I would never do it all over your face because you might, you might experience some breakouts or some clogged pores. So, I wouldn't do that. But if you are very dry, if you are normal like me, um, and you are like, you know, I'm a, I'm 50, I'll be getting ready to turn 51 in April. Um, so, I really try to do as much moisture as I can. And sometimes at night, I really need that extra moisture. So, I really have been enjoying these. And then the other thing that I really love doing too is this is my, uh, this is the Abilene Moisturizing Cleanser. Um, I use this a lot, like, to really break up makeup when I'm doing a lot of filming, um, or if I'm, if I have a lot of heavier makeup on, I love to use this product. Um, this th sells for usually around seven, eight dollars for this, um, big container. Usually, you can get it at Walmart. Um, I don't think Target carries it, but I know Walmart carries it. I think, uh, Walgreens, CVS, I think some of them carry it, but I know that it also carry it on Amazon. But this is a really, really good product. Um, it's fragrance free. There's nothing to it. Again, it's a, it feels more like a petroleum base. Um, it's used as a makeup cleanser. It takes off eye makeup and everything. Again, I wouldn't recommend this if you're a little bit more on the 
the oilier side or combination side. This would be if you're more of a drier skin tone or if you're a little bit more normal, but you could use this as a moisturizing balm to actually help to remove your makeup first and then go back over it with a cleanser, which is typically kind of what I do with this, but sometimes I will just wipe it away because it is a little bit more of an old school kind of product. Um, it doesn't have any fragrance to it or anything like that. It just looks like typical, like, you know, I don't know if you guys can see it because it's very clear, but it looks just like a little bit like Vaseline. It looks like a little bit like a, a, a Vaseline -y kind of cold cream, but it's not a cold cream. It's more feel Vaseline than it feels like cold cream. Then it breaks it up, you know, but you do have to remove it with a cleanser, but I just really have been enjoying it. It's just a, such a great product. And what I will do in the mornings is I will put it all over my face before I get into the shower and I will let the steam just kind of look up because especially if I haven't shaved yet, I'll just massage it all in and just leave it and then I'll do everything else. And then before I get out of the shower, I will take a little bit of a, a nourishing cleanser or something over it just to break it up a little bit and just kind of remove some of the excess. So when I get ready to shave, it just makes it go on much, much better. And not only that, but it kind of plumps it up. I got this. This is um, an old school uh, Jacqueline Smith trick. And if you guys are, if you don't know who Jacqueline Smith is, she was a Charlie's Angel. Um, she was the original Charlie a Charlie's Angels. Um, and she was just absolutely beautiful. And I was so infatuated with how she always managed to look so good because she's in her, I think she's in her 70s now. And she looks amazing. And this used to be one of her tricks in the 90s. And I picked it up and I've just been in love with it ever since. And so I love it. So this is one of the things that she does before she gets into the shower that she says that makes it look makes her look so good, but it is a really good product. It is very hydrating. It's like a mask if you leave it on in a shower, but um, but that's all it is. It's not anything super spectacular. It's not a miracle cream or anything, but it will plump up your skin and it will make it look better, and with the steam in the shower, it does help. Um, so, those are some things that I've really been enjoying. Now, we are going to go on to some makeup items that we've really enjoyed for the month of February. I have really been enjoying these brand, these Dior Attic Lip Glosses. I've really enjoyed it. This is in shade 092. It is like a very, very sparkly. It's kind of a very beautiful iridescence kind of a, um, a lip gloss. If you guys can see a little bit of the iridescence to it, it reminds me a little bit of the Blue Astral Flower by the uh, by Pat McGrath, but it's a little bit more on the, it's got a little bit more of a violet, purplish, pinky twinge to it, but it just really brightens up a lipstick and it makes it look really super pretty. And then um, this one is the Dior and this one is um, in 553 and this is Princess. Um, this one was called Stellular, by the way, and this one's called Princess, and she's a little bit more on the pinky side. So, if you're looking for, like, a really pretty soft pink lip gloss, and you don't really, you just want something with just a little bit more hint of sheen to it, but you don't like a lipstick lipstick, but you like a little pink, this is a really pretty color, and you gotta love the name Princess. You gotta love it. Um, and, you know, and this one is just really beautiful if you just want to jazz up your lipstick or just give it, like, a little bit of a flare. This will just jazz it up a little bit and just give a little pop. So, these are just really really, really great. I forgot how much they are. I, I want to say they're around the $35, $39 range because they're Dior, um, but they do feel really good. Their glosses, Dior's glosses are amazing. If you guys don't know, if you're new to my channel, I work for Dior on the side, so I do have a, um, I do freelance for them um, and do events and stuff, so I do really enjoy the brand. As you can see, I don't, I mean, I'm not paid to say anything about Dior or whatever, but I just really love the brand, um, so I just really cherish it, and I will also work for Lancome, so I love them as well. Um, um, so there's just a lot of goodness in Dior, so um, and a lot more to come to in the upcoming months. So just to give you guys that little hint, and um, so let's move on to the next one. The other two lip products, and I'm going to put beside these two glosses, are these Mac lip sticks. So I went in to look for the color Angel, um, which is a, a color that Kim Kardashian wore that everybody was really fanatic over, and maybe the late, I'm going to say the early 2000s when she first was big and she just came out and she was wearing in this color. Well, the color is still really popular and it's really hard to get. But um, while I was at the MAC counter, I didn't get that shade because they were out of it. But I did pick up this color Brave um, and I really do like it. It's this really cool, pinky, 
mauvey, rosy, beautiful color. It's just so nice. And this is like part of their, um, I think it's part of their cream collection. Or the satin lip, it's in a satin lipstick. And then the other one is in the shade Cream Cup is the name of it. And it's a little, she's a little bit more on the lighter. She's more of a lighter pinky nude. I felt like I had like a lot of nudes and like more on the brown side and the peachy side, but I didn't have anything more on the pinky side. So I wanted something a little bit more on the pinky side. And you know, you can always trust MAC for some really beautiful lipstick colors and really beautiful nude colors. So, um, so I picked that up. Um, and you know, it's like, I've been eyeing their new mascara. They came out about that one. Um, they just came out with it. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe picking that up too. But, um, you know, I don't really pick up a lot of MAC, but you know, but some of the, their MAC has some beautiful classic items and MAC is known, they're just world renowned known for makeup artistry and what they bring to the table. Um, you know, even though I know a lot of people don't really look at them as a big brand, as the brand that they used to be, but, um, but they do have some really good staple products and I really have been enjoying these lips and I have partnered them together and I have put them over top of other things too. So I played with them a few times with a couple different things that I've really, really been enjoying them. The next one that I've really been playing with a lot and I've really been into it and I got this back in holiday um, because um, they came out, he came out with it in a palette and this is the Patrick Ta for face. It's the blushes. Um, it's the blush palette. It's in She's a Doll, She's Vibrant, and she Baked. Um, these are just, he just released these currently all singles because the palette ran out a few times and um, I guess he felt like he could probably make more money off of dividing them instead of keeping them together. So he did come out with each one of these in a palette plus he came out with an extra shade. But I'm pulling these back out and really been playing with them. I've really been playing with the creams a lot by themselves more than with the powder. And I've really realized if you put this on top of powder or the cream, if you if you really put powder all over your skin and you really press it in, and then you do the blush over in the cream and you kind of build it up, it does such a really, really beautiful job. Um, that's not what I have on now, by the way. It's not. It's like I have on, um, this is the, the Jacqueline. I have on the Jacqueline stick. This is the one that she came out with the Bougie Rouge collection. Um, and it's in the shade Royal Flush. That's what I have on my cheeks now with a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. Um, but it is a really super awesome, really beautiful palette. I'm really enjoying these. So I didn't pick these up separately because I already have them. But these cream blushes, I've really been enjoying using them and stacking them up and building them. And I've been using this with about at least every other day or so. And when I've been doing looks and stuff, I've really been reaching for this. So I, when I first got it, I was just, it kind of like was just sitting around a little bit. I used it and then kind of sitting around and then all of a sudden when he released them, I was like, oh, I need to really play with those more. And I've just really, really been enjoying them, especially if you like power punches of like a little bit of a tropical punch color. And if you like something with a little bit more of a baby doll pink, or you like something with just a little bit hint of a, like a, not a cinnamon, but it's got a little bit of a bronzy burnt look to it um, with a little red to it. This would be, these are just great blushes to use and his blushes are great. The powder and the creams are both really awesome. So I I do recommend um, if you are looking for a new blush, and I know since Sephora sale was coming up in April, that this may be some, uh, one of the blushes may be something you might be interested in. So next up we have with a little discovery that I found out in February, and I do have this on now. I did put it, I did do a very light set with it, and that is the Givenchy powder, and this is in the Wool Rose. It's in the uh, number three. Um, so, and I love saying Givenchy, Givenchy, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know, <laughs> probably over the top, if you're from France and I'm saying it wrong, you're probably like, oh God, he sounds terrible. <laughs> But it's just my attempt to be French. But anyway, but it is just so beautiful. The packaging's really beautiful. The powder is gorgeous. It's got a little bit of like, there's different color. There's like four different chambers of different colors. There's one with the pink, one with like a medium, uh, with a little bit more of a beige. One's got a little bit of a lighter pink. And then it's like a little uh, mixture. And then it mixes all together at the top. And then it comes out with this beautiful brightness that sets the skin. Um, it looks really beautiful on the skin. It blurs the pores. And um, my favorite powder before this one was the Huda powder. 
and I do love my Huda baking powder. It's really beautiful. They're both matte, so they do have like a matte. This one has a little bit more of a luminosity underneath it where the Huda is completely sheath matte. Um, but what I do is I normally, um, I love my Maybelline glass spray. I use this consistently. I use it a lot. I used it over top of this look today. I love that spray. It's like, you know, it's an, it's like a $10 spray. It's super easy. It's beautiful. It does have a slit to it. So it does leave a little bit of a slide on the face. If you don't like that, you won't like it. Um, cause it's not one that kind of sits and goes away. It does leave a, like a little bit of a, a film over the skin, but I love that because I'm dry. So I really enjoy it. But when I use it with powders like this, it just immediately takes away the any of the matte that I don't like if I set my under eye, but it leaves the brightness and it stays all day. It stays amazing all day. So this is a really, really good powder. So even if you're dry, if you use a really, really good setting spray, like with either your Charlotte Tilbury, or if you use something like a glass skin, or you have like a hydrating spray, this would be absolutely beautiful for you. I think you would really enjoy it. Um, just be careful. Don't go crazy with it. Just set it lightly. Um, if you don't like powder and if you're really, really dry, I mean, I would just skip it all together. It's not something that you absolutely have to have, but I have really been enjoying it since I bought it because I did it just because of a TikTok um, situation and everybody was talking about it and how wonderful it was and it was viral and yada, 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 yada. So I thought I would try it. I noticed also that Huda is coming out with a, she came out with a cherry blossom powder that's a little bit more on the pink side. I like pink brightening powder. Powders. Um, something about them just does a little bit. If you've got a little bit of red in your skin or a little pink in your skin, it does brighten it up and it does do a good job of doing that. Um, you know, but not everybody can do those. But I mean, but I do like a little pink in my powder sometimes and there is a little pink in here and I do like that because brightening, uh, pink does brighten up my skin a little bit. Um, but it is really, really beautiful. So I would definitely recommend it. I wanted to just say how much I really have been enjoying this Natasha Denona primer. I know that I just did a review on it, but I've been using this all week. I've been using it with the Transformat and the Face Glow, and I've been using both of the concealers mixed together. I've been doing that little bit of combination that I did in my Natasha Denona complexion video with uh, the I Need a Rose collection. I am addicted to this stuff. It looks so good. Now, I don't have it on right now. Um, I did a little bit of the Westman Atelier mixed in with a little bit of um, Merit. I mixed it together. But this is just a beautiful combination. A pump of this, a pump of this, and I just take it, mix it together. I put it all over with a damp sponge. I've realized that a damp sponge, it looks even better with. And I just take it and I press it into the skin really good. And then I take a little bit of my two concealers and I take it with just my finger and just lightly do it instead of with a brush just with my finger and then just set it a little bit with a sponge. Oh my god, it looks so good. And I've been using a little bit of powder over it, but not very much because I don't really need to. It does such a good job on its own. But this primer feels so, so good. It's so hydrating. It feels really rich. It reminds me a lot of the Vitamin uh, Rich Face Base by Bobbi Brown. And I've really been enjoying it. But these two foundations, I'm really happy with these. I'm so glad that I picked them up. I'm sorry, I got to flip around backwards. I've really been enjoying these. They've just really surprised me. I got them basically because they were on on sale, and I've never tried Natasha Denona complexion. I've always been curious about it. Like, you know, um, you know, nobody, I never hear anybody ever talk about it. I played with it a little bit in my Sephora. They had this one. They didn't really have this one um, in my Sephora. And I felt it before, and I thought it felt okay. But, um, you know, but it said matte, and I was like, okay, well, I'm not a matte person, so I'm not going to like it. But when I got these, I just fell in love with both of them. They're just so, so good. So this one's really good if you're very normal to dry. If you want a very sheer to light coverage, this one's really good if you want a little bit more of the same, but in more of a matte formation. And then she has another foundation. It's called Foundation X, I think is what it's called. And it's more full coverage. Um, but they are, but together, the, the matte and this together create a beautiful satin look on the skin. And they just makes your pores look beautiful. It makes your skin look really flawless. I get so many compliments out of this little combination with the concealer and the primer underneath it. Um, so I've really been enjoying it. It's a big surprise. It was something I wasn't expecting to happen and I've really, really been enjoying it. So these have definitely been a big hit for me for the month of February. I've not been using them very long. I've really been enjoying them. So it's like so far I've gotten probably more uh, use out of it than I have some of the other ones. 
you know how you get when you get you get a brand new foundation or something. Sometimes the other ones just take a back seat or you forget about them. You're like, oh, I forgot I had this. <laughs> that's kind of what's been happening to me these days. That's what's been happening to me lately. The next product that is like that I didn't enjoy, and this is actually really recent. Like when I say really recent, this is recent. This is the Voluminous Brown um, Balm Mascara, and this is by L'Oreal. Um, and I picked this up because I just had seen it. It's a new mascara by L'Oreal. I love L'Oreal mascaras. Um, it's a really beautiful, I got it in a brown, which I, I really love. It's just a really pretty dark brown. I really kind of like the brush. I think the brush is really cool. Um, you know what though? It sucks. It's not a good mascara. It's supposed to be like a lot of these companies like L'Oreal, um, Chanel, um, you know, Lancome, Dior, a lot of them are going natural. So they're doing a lot of things. They're taking out a lot of the older ingredients and they're adding newer ones in to be more cleaner and to be more environmental friendly because of the new, the younger generation. Um, because they want to, um, gear to the cleaner. So they're trying to, get, they're trying to catch up with like the Sephora's and the Ulta's and that kind of sort of thing and all the new trend of being more natural and be more earth friendly and more planet friendly which is a good thing it's not a bad thing it's a good thing but however you know sometimes you know it's just like with the mascara i mean because this is supposed to be like a 97 percent you know like natural origin ingredients it's supposed to be good for your lashes it's supposed to be a healthy ingredient honey this shit flakes everywhere it flakes all over the place. You just touch them and flakes go everywhere. It's flaky. Um, it clumps. You get little clumps in your lashes. I mean, you know, it just does not, I mean, I was just really, really, I just hate it because, uh, but the voluminous mascara does do that on me too. So it's not a too, too big of a surprise. Um, but I just thought it being a bomb mascara and it being really good for your lashes to just kind of make them look a little long, a little natural, you know, it's supposed to give them like the volume effect and everything. It's supposed to be seven times fuller. Um, and I like a really pretty brown. So I'm kind of disappointed in it. Now, I mean, of course it was only seven, eight dollars. So it wasn't bad. Um, and I've used it like two or three times, but I'm just telling you every single time it flies lakes everywhere and clumps like there's no tomorrow and it does that on me now if one of you guys has picked this up and you love it please let us know down in the comments below like why you love it maybe there's something i'm doing wrong what have you done that makes it better for you you know please let us know down in the comments below because i really really want to like this <laughs> I hate that we don't, that I don't, because most of the L'Oreal mascaras, other than Voluminous, which, but it, it, which will flake on me if I do too much of it, but this one, just even doing a little bit, just, it just flakes. It just flakes everywhere. It doesn't stay on very well. Um, so, I mean, anyway, this was just not a good for me. So, I mean, I mean, although I know it was only $7, still again, $7 is $7 these days. Um, but I did get off of Amazon. So, I mean, so unfortunately, it was just one of them things that I just didn't care for. Um, but now into two things that I did love going back. We're going back to being positive again from the negative. <laughs> so, um, is two beautiful fragrances. And I know that I work for them, but they are just, they've really become my favorites this month. It's two fragrances is the Dior Home Sport. And this is the Sauvage Elixir. So, I just have to tell you guys a little story about it. So, I'm going to try my best because I'm going to make this video like 80 minutes long. Um, but the Dior Sport um, is such a beautiful product. It's so, so beautiful. Um, it, it has pear in it. It has citrus. It has a spicy woody note to it that they just added. They just um, upgraded the bottle and they just, they added a little bit of a woody note to it. But before, it didn't have it. But it is just so super clean and fresh it has a little bit of Veveteer to it. It has a little bit of a geranium essence to it. It's just like this really beautiful, it's like a masculine, but yet if you're a little bit more on the sensitive side, it's for anyone that has a little bit of a variety of, you know, the senses, like, you know, you're, you're a little sensitive, but yet you're strong, but yet you've got a lot of, you know, you're rebellious or, I mean, it's just a lot of different personalities in this. It's a very, very punchy fragrance but it does it in a very unique kind of way so it, but it's very fresh it just smells very sexy it's just a beautiful fragrance so if um if you like a fragrance um you know and when i say you because 
In Dior, we are no longer seeing men and women's fragrances anymore. We've we've taken that out of the bent. In Dior, everything is unisex. So they're not so we're not putting a claim on this is a man's fragrance and we're not saying this is a woman's fragrance. So if you want to use a, a woman's fragrance with this and you want to mix them together, we're we're selling them like that. We're not no longer putting a label on the fragrances anymore because of the company. We are looking at we're just that's just how we're kind of selling things these days. But this is a really beautiful fragrance. It smells really nice. So if you like a very clean smell to it, a very woodsy citrus, this is really, really beautiful. And then we go on to the Sauvage Elixir. And if you guys know anything, if you've been under a rock, you know that Sauvage is the number one men's fragrance in the world. Um, It is like in all the department stores, it is the number one. It sells like crazy. Every day it sells insane um, because of the people that buy it. And I'm telling you, women buy it more than almost men do because women will buy it and mix it with more of a floral and then they mix it together to create this beautiful essence. Um, it just because because there's different ones. There's a toilet, there's the uh, odor de parfum, and then there's the parfum, and then there is the elixir, which is the newest in the family. It ranges for it's around 160, and then by the way, the D Dior Sport is around 110 for this one. Um, but this one's around 160. It only comes in this one size, but guys, let me tell you, it has grapefruit and lavender in it. It has pitchawan pepper, it has amber note and patchouli all together in it. And it smells so beautiful and so earthy and so, it's like outdoorsy. It's so rugged, but yet it's so um, sexy, but yet powerful, but yet spicy, but yet, um, adventurous. It's such an adventurous fragrance. It's so, so pretty. When you smell it, it's just so awesome. And just a little spritz is all you need. You don't need a lot. And you just tap just a little bit. And then if you, if you want something with a little bit more sweetness to it, take it and mix just another little drop over it and just, you know, hold over top of your wrist right here. Just hold it a little bit and just wait before you actually smell it. When you ever go into a store and you ever smell a fragrance, don't take it and spray it and then immediately go straight to your nose. Wait, hold it. Put your hand over it a little bit and just wait and just give yourself about two or three, you know, about a good 30 seconds or 20 seconds. Let it just kind of sit into the skin. Then take your hand away, then smell it because then that way you're getting more of the essential notes and not as much of the alcohol. Because in the beginning, when you first spray it, you're going to get a little bit more of the alcohol than not, which is what makes it stay on. So just kind of like, you know, just let it die down a little bit and let the oils kind of soak into your skin first. But this is like all essential oils pretty much. And it just, it smells delightful. It smells really good. If you're ever in a store, you know, please thought by smell it you know um if you're looking it for for someone that you love or if you want to look for if you want to add it to your collection and you want to mix it with something if you like a little mystery and a little spice you would love it so with that said guys we are done i think i've run my mouth <laughs> i didn't mean to run my mouth that much but um but anyway, I'm so glad that you were here. I hope that you liked all my favorites that I had for the month of February. Can't wait to see what we're going to come up with in March because a lot of stuff is coming out and some other things. You know, we have a new Dior concealer, which I'm excited about. That's coming, you know. So, a couple little things here and there. We're not going to go super crazy ever buying stuff because, you know, we're... We're trying to watch our money with some of that stuff. But we will have some samples and some things and some stuff. We'll do some things like that. And I've got to get, re get ready with me that I've still got to film. I haven't got to do that yet. And I've got tons. I've got a whole bag full of little things to pull out of everybody asking me. That's going to be a five-hour video. <laughs> so, anyway, you guys, please take care. You know, be safe, be strong, be proud, stand tall, love yourself. Remember to love somebody today. Reach out to them. Tell them that you love them. You know, because life is way too short. And also be a little kind to somebody. A little thank you. A little kindness can go an awful long way every single day. So anyway, you guys take care. Please have a good rest of your day. And um, we will see you again in the next episode. Bye.